Real Life Trading Nation. Real Life Traders from around the world. We are going to be working with a very special human being today. Going to hear his story, learn about who he is, his name, his trading background, his career, and uh, his trading style. So, my man, introduce yourself for the world. Awesome. Thank you, my man. Um, to be here in paradise with you and, and talk shop has just been an amazing experience. Um, it's been great. And, uh, you know, beautiful days every day. We get up, we uh, look at some charts, talk some shop, and then make some moves. It's been uh, a wonderful experience. So um, my name is Michael Maslowski for all of you out there. Uh, I've actually been trading for almost uh, two decades at this point. Um, I started actually when I was in college during the, the dot com, I would say boom, but actual bust is about the time that I got into into trading, um, you know, and uh, uh, at that time, everything was going up. You know, you couldn't you couldn't go wrong. You couldn't go wrong. Everyone was making money doing stocks. I was like, I need to get in on this game. So, of course, I, you know, invested in things I probably didn't know enough about and shouldn't have. So, you know, you learn your lessons early on and then uh, hone in your skills. Um, and then uh, I started learning options actually about the 2008-2009 uh, meltdown and uh, uh, another very interesting time to uh, learn some new things in the market and uh, make some new moves. But uh, that really, uh, I, I think for me personally, uh, kind of set a chart for me that um, was uh, amazing in terms of growth, personal growth, uh, trading styles, things like that, where I've learned a lot of different types of things with options made some mistakes along the way, like we always do. But, uh, you know, now at this point, um, very uh, comfortable trading options, trading the stocks and uh, have a, a few of my own types of strategies and, and things that I uh, pursue. And uh, as of right now, I'm, I'm actually a, a feature trader with a group called uh, Option Swing. And uh, I have a channel there where I um, specifically give out calls and teach a strategy uh, based on selling and collecting premium off options trade. So uh, really kind of taking the essence of real estate investing, any type of more passive income investing, putting that into the stock market for very consistent gains, um, consistent wins, and uh, helps you sleep at night, you know, just keep the income rolling in. Love it. I don't know how much we need to put past this back and forth, but in general, I'm really going to be intrigued to hear more about your strategy. So I'm going to ask you kind of like three questions and you can just kind of hit on all of them. So question number one would be, you mostly do put sales or do you do credit spreads? Uh, number two would be, do you focus on like, what type of stocks and or companies do you focus on? And the number three is what expirations do you use? Perfect. So um, typically what I do now, and, and this, of course, when you're starting out, maybe you have a smaller account and you're trying to collect premium, credit spreads are definitely the way to go. Because uh, when you sell put contracts, which is typically what I do, um, and you're trying to collect premium, you know, you have to have collateral. And uh, sometimes when you're starting out, spreads are a great way to do that. Uh, could be uh, iron condors where uh, stocks kind of stays in a channel and you can go ahead and, and just sell a, uh, um, a bear call spread and a bull put spread at the same time, make that an iron condor, collect premium along the way. Uh, what I do now though, however, in terms of uh, really building my portfolio, uh, really attacking cost basis is just selling the puts themselves. So when I do that, I collect the premium and I identify a price that I really, hey, this stock, I like it, it's here. I would love to buy it if it hit here. So why don't I just make some money along the way while I'm doing that? So sell a put contract, um, let the stock do its thing. Uh, could go up, could go down. But the best part about when you're collecting premium, which I love about it is, your profit scenarios. So typically, if you were looking at an option contract and you wanna buy a call or buy a put, not only do you have to have the right direction, but you have to have the right magnitude of that direction too, because time value is going against you. When you're selling uh, a put or a call and you're collecting that premium, so if you sell a put, for instance, stock goes up, you're still profitable. Stock stays sideways, you're still profitable. Stock can even come down a little bit, still profitable. No matter what, you get the premium. Your worst case scenario when you're selling a put, which I love about it, is I just get assigned 100 shares. And at that point, what I would do is then typically create a straddle. So I would sell another put, which again, kind of uh, 
getting my cost basis down, dollar cost averaging. So if it keeps going down more, I get assigned again, I'm getting assigned a lower cost basis. Uh, I'm also taking that premium and deducting that from the strike. And that's actually what my break even is. And um, at that time too, I'd also would sell a call after I get assigned as well. So now I'm collecting premium on both fronts. Stock can do its thing, don't really care where it goes. And uh, what that process is called a wheel. So as you're building a straddle and you're building shares, you can go ahead and, and complete the wheel and just keep collecting premium on all sides of those shares. So it's been great. It's, it's great in really any type of market, um, market going up, staying sideways, anything like that. And typically the type of stocks that I identify um, are going to be stocks that, uh, you know, you and I had talked about this earlier about, uh, hey, what do you use? What do you know? Um, and that's typically what I do. I love doing this on uh, stocks like Apple. Um, big fan of Tesla. And Tesla's great because um, this type of strategy really has a lot of risk mitigation built in. And I always kind of play with some downside protection. I love that. So on Tesla, the premiums are really high. So when you're wanting to buy a call, buy a put, you're looking at it like, man, these premiums are high. If you sell the premium, that's a great, great thing. So um, a recent trade I just did, Tesla was hovering around the, you know, 625 to 650 mark. Um, I was able to sell uh, 500 put and literally make like two grand on it in three weeks. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? That's that's almost and and you know your your collateral on that is uh, you know the the hundred shares of Tesla at that that so 50k, but that return on investment uh, is great. And if you extrapolate that over a year, I mean, you could easily double your portfolio in a year, and you have a ton of downside protection. So for me, my main focus is really consistency over profit. I just, uh, you know, profits are going to come. So if you create a plan, create a strategy, you stick to your plan, stick to your strategy, the profits will come, but it's really developing that strategy. So uh, that's typically what I look for. I look for those types of stocks that A, I know, B, typically have a, a, a good premium built in. So um, the volatility factor in premium is sometimes very skewed. So if you can find those types of stocks, and, and I use a couple screeners where I'll look at, uh, you know, high volatility uh, stocks, maybe, maybe they've moved, maybe there's a news event, something like that. And I'll take a look, I'll look at the chart. Um, what I typically look for uh, at, at chart levels for myself, I look at the six month, three month and one month when I'm looking for a larger trend. And that will kind of identify a good support value for me to start by selling a put. Um, and a lot of volatile stocks, uh, Fastly is one of my favorite ones to do this. And as a matter of fact, today, Fastly had dropped down. Um, this is the third time I'm, I'm selling an 85 put and getting about four or 500 bucks for each one of them. Uh, the expiration is actually just uh, January 15th. So two to three weeks. And that's typically what I look for is I won't go out more than a month to six weeks, uh, really because the time value starts decaying a lot, especially within six weeks of expiration. So that works to your advantage when you sell an option contract. So when you're, you're buying one, time value is your enemy. But when you're selling them, time value is your friend and you're just eating theta. Uh, the, the time value is called theta and it's just nom, 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 nom. Just, just let it just keep going down, keep going down. So you're looking at your portfolio every day. That's another day. Stocks is kind of hovering around there and, and the option value is actually going in your favor. So um, yeah, it's typically how I stick to my rules. Um, I'll typically look for um, uh, of increased volatility factor in the premium uh, stocks that I know, stocks that I would want to own at a particular price based on what I see as an overall trend over the past, you know, six month, three month, one month chart that I'm looking at. Um, and I'll go out uh, maybe six weeks at the most when I'm going ahead and selling that. Very cool. Thank you, Mike. That's super helpful. And I love selling puts, man. It's one of my favorite strategies. Like, yeah, yeah. And uh, when you're dealing with cred spreads, option selling, volatility, premium decay, you are looking for certain types of plays. So when you're looking at your charts, do you use moving averages? Do you use candlesticks? Are you a bar chart kind of person? What's your technical charts look like? Yeah, um, I typically uh, look at 
uh, honestly, I'll bring the candlesticks up and I'll look for a major support line or a major support trend. That That's typically what I'm looking for. I try not to read too much into it only because, you know, from the, the day-to-day perspective, I don't know what the stock's gonna do. So what I'm trying to identify is uh, looking at that, put a trend line there, find the su- major supports in those three month, six month, one month timeframes and really identify, okay, that's that's a strong support level. So if you go too too uh, tight of a time frame, or you're looking at too you know just um, uh, recent volatility, sometimes uh, you won't really be able to identify like what what's the strongest support that this has right now. And to me, that's a that's a buy signal. So that that area when it hits that mark, um, that's where I want to set my price target at. So when the stock pulls back you actually get increased volatility in the premium, especially on the puts, which is great. So you have the pullback on the stock, you identify it's like, okay, this is the price I wanna buy it at based on the major support trend that I've identified in those time frames, And that's what you sell the strike at. And the premium that I typically try to, uh, to look for in that is about, I would say a, a five to 10% return in a given month on my collateral. So what in the real estate market or investing, we call it cash, cash on cash return. I call it cash on collateral return when I'm doing it here in the, uh, the stock market. So if I can get, if I could, you know, again, I have a 50 K trade, um, and then I can, I can make, you know, 3000 to 5,000 on that within a month that's kind of what I'm really looking for. So if I can do it, well, like I said, with the Tesla thing, you know, two to three weeks making two to three grand, that's great. Cause again, that gives me my, you know, five to 10% return per month that I'm looking for on my collateral. And a lot of people don't realize that when you do that, you technically can double your portfolio in under a year. To me, it's, it's, it's the long game. You know, uh, a, a lot of people, especially in this market, uh, have have really focused on you know get rich quick get rich quick and they don't realize the power and the snowball effect that you can have if you keep doubling your portfolio every year every 18 months doing plays that are much less risky you don't need to look at them every day you just let the theta work it, it, it has a lot of power to it and that's typically how I trade uh, most of my portfolio, which is great. And um, I've gotten a lot of great feedback when when I teach this because one of the things I love about what you're doing and that really resonates with me too is the teaching aspect. I love, love, love educating people on new ways to trade, you know, new ways to think about it. It's like, well, maybe, maybe I don't need to do it, you know, this way, or maybe I could kind of take part of my portfolio and and uh, and trade in a way that's a, a little more conservative or has a little bit more risk mitigation built in or something that I don't need to look at every day and it just builds the income over time. This is a great way to do that. So for me uh, personally, I do probably about 75% of my portfolio. I'm doing it with this method again because I don't need to look at it every day if something comes up uh, I can't I can't watch look look at the charts every day I can't look at my positions I can just set it and forget it which is great the other 25% of my portfolio I'm doing much more of the uh, directional type of plays that uh, you know maybe maybe shorter profits day trades things like that very cool man yeah again the talking the shop is awesome especially when someone like I know all the things you're talking about (laughs) because in in really any massive profession, you can get marketers together or doctors, like people do respect people who just understand the jargon because there is that aspect to it. And you know, it's the stock market. So that financial jargon can be kind of challenging. So some questions about risk when you're selling these puts, you mentioned collateral. So you're not doing them naked or are they cash secured? Okay. So cash secured puts. And how do you protect in a downside position? Because you did mention like you get put to shares and then you'll do a straddle. So you'll sell some puts and you'll sell some calls. What if the stock just kept going down? How would you present, protect yourself in that situation? And then secondly, tell me a trade that went really, really poorly. And how did you execute that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's the thing to think about is that, uh, you know, any, any time that uh, you have a, a violent move downward, uh, you do run the potential of 
adding the shares on the way down. So this approach that I'm taking, I already know it's that I want to build my portfolio with these shares. And so I'm thinking about it in reverse. Like a lot of people would think about, okay, well, how much can I profit? I buy these shares and if it goes up, I'm going to profit this. What I'm, I'm actually looking at it from a different way. I'm like, okay, if I buy these shares, what's my cost basis? And if it keeps going down, how do I lower my cost basis very quickly and very effectively? And so this is the type of trade that does that. So when basically you're having a violent move downward, um, and, and actually I, I, I got to bring up uh, uh, Fastly again, because I've actually run uh, the, the strategy that I'm talking about, a wheel on it several times. So uh, Fastly, for instance, I sold a put, uh, Fastly at that time was maybe about $93 a share. I sold an 85 put and I got up $500 for that. So now effectively, my if I get assigned shares, at 85 a share, which I, I would since the 85 strike, but I got $5 per share on that, then my break even is 80 a share. Well, Fastly kept going down. Yeah. It, it basically, like 60, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it actually might have even been lower than that. Um, so it kept going down. So I got to sign the shares. Uh, so now my break even is 80 on that. And now Fastly's down to 72. So now it's like, okay, well now I'm, I'm technically down about $8 a share now. Um, and, and as we just said, it, it kept going down. Um, so what's interesting about the straddle is I, I actually don't execute the straddle, the, the selling a call and selling a put at the same time. Uh, what I do at that time is once I get assigned these shares, then I, I look at it as like, okay, looking at the charts again, identifying those support positions, resistance positions, because now I'm gonna sell a call. So I identify that, okay, Fastly's trading here. It's at 72 a share. Well, if it drops down to 67, this was my price target. I know that I'm gonna sell a 62 put because I've identified on the longer term time frame chart that that is a major, major support level. So I'm gonna wait for it to get down to that price target that I have of 67 to execute selling a put because I know that the premium I'm gonna get on that is gonna be high. And then I know that if it swings upwards, that's when I'm gonna sell my calls. So on any any time that I'm gonna create that straddle, I'm gonna wait for an up day or an up move to sell the call. I'm gonna wait for a down day or a down move um, you know, to sell that particular put and identify those price targets. Now, Fastly kept going down again. It hit that, it got down, yeah, got down below 67. It was, I think about maybe 65 was a low point at that time. But once I hit that 67 target, sold the 62 put, and then I let that sit. I sold the 62 put again, I got another $500 in premium. So now I'm looking at it, I got to sign these shares at 80, I sold another put, I can actually take that premium and deduct that, and now my cost basis is 75 a share. And so that's how you're attacking things when you're selling premium is you're, you're just constantly looking at what's my cost basis. And in the meantime, while you're doing that over time, you're just racking up premium income. So then what happened, which was great, is then Fastly went on a violent move upward and that's when boom, all right, sell the call. And it's pretty easy to um, kind of get a bounce back where you have the ability to sell your uh, call position at the strike that you got assigned. So I ended up selling a call at where I got assigned for another $500 when it went back up. And so now I've got another thousand dollars and now I've taken my cost basis down to Fastly to 70 just on the premium. Right. And then, but if it keeps going down, it's still okay because I'm dollar cost averaging now at the 62, if I get assigned again, now I'm buying another 100 shares at 62, and now I'm dollar cost averaging that as well. So now my cost basis has gone from 85 where I got assigned, and just with a couple moves, I've taken it down to the 60s, which is amazing. At that point, what I do once I have about 200 shares is I'll focus on selling calls on those and until I can kind of get, um, really back to my strike price to to make sure i keep all that premium and just collect premium over time because at the end of the day i have shares it's sitting there it's an asset that i can actually still collect uh income off of so that's what i love about that strategy um is that you're constantly constantly lowering your cost basis you're constantly playing to the downside so you, you constantly have protection 
And when you get down to it and you, you start building your portfolio with these shares, now you've got an, a tangible asset that you can collect income off of by selling calls. And um, honestly, it, it's, it's been just a game changer for my life. Um, just, you know, with uh, newly married, have, have a young son, you know, sometimes being able to sit in front of the computer and uh, make a few trades is, uh, you know, uh, a little more difficult. So being able to, you know, find a way that, wow, I can, I can trade and still collect this income and not have to look at it every day, not have to even worry about, you can go up, down, sideways, ah, really don't care. And that's, that's a very comforting feeling. And just to, to have that income rolling in pays the mortgage, you know, pays the car note, everything like that. So it's a, uh, it's a really strong thing to learn, especially for the long term, because it's not, it's not just a thing of like, okay, people think of the stock market. It's like, oh, I just buy stocks and just oh, hope they go up. You know, no, there's a lot of ways to play the stock market where even if things go down, it, it, it can work in your favor and you can continually make income off of your assets that are sitting in your account. Love that, man. That's an incredible real life perspective because you're mentioning using the stock market to pay off your car, to pay off the mortgage, yeah. just pay off the bills that we have normally in life and then have an income from other sources, a job or whatever else where we can use that for play money or vacation money. Or I know you're a real estate investor as well. So real estate investing money just to slowly build that portfolio for the legacy. You know? And that's that's really the point. That's really the key. Which is amazing, man. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. So one last thing, what's the uh, the worst trade ever that you've taken? <laughs> well, actually, um, I, I will tell you when I was learning options, again, getting back to the educational part, um, what we have now for education, like like what, what you're doing and helping people where, you know, you can go to your website and watch free videos on how to trade uh, with Option Swing, uh, which I'm a part of. Very, very big on the educational standpoint. Um, if, if you have if people that join that group, they are going to learn everything there is to know about options trading. When I learned options, uh, I paid three thousand dollars for a course called Better Trades, and it was a it was a three day course. It wasn't very good, um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And it's like it's like I, I spent so much money. I had nobody to talk to about this, no resources to really go because options were so new. I was just kind of winging it, um, you know. So in that process, you make a lot of mistakes, um, and there's there's two trades in particular that really sting me to this day uh one was a what i thought was a guaranteed credit spread uh that oh this is definitely gonna work there's no way google's gonna go down this much and i had this spread i think i only i i maybe made like 200 bucks on it but my max loss is like 10 grand <laughs> and it went down to that yeah. And I, I, I couldn't figure out what I did, but, but I, I realized my mistake at the time. And I was like, oh man, I, you know, I, I, sh I should not have a made assumptions, uh, that, that I did. I didn't look at any charts and, you know, I just assumed, Hey, Google's always going to go up. And we have this mentality that, oh, the stock market's always going to go up or the real, any market real estate's always going to go up. That's when you're really prone to make mistakes and lose money because you, you think everything is going to be guaranteed at that point. But the, really the worst, the worst trading I ever did was I started getting really creative. I'm like, oh, what are these broken butterfly type spreads and things like that? And I started doing a, uh, a broken butterfly uh, strategy on the Russell 2000 index. And let me tell you, uh, yeah, strategy works amazing in any market it, you know because okay stock goes up pulls back a little bit it was always playing pullbacks one scenario where this this particular strategy would not work is if the market just went straight up like this and guess what happened it went straight up yes and i i lost six figures in six months uh it it, it stung me really bad and that's when I took a step back and I regrouped. And there's a couple things that I learned from that scenario. A, keep it simple. You know what I mean? There's a lot of complex things that you can do out there and a lot of things that people would be like, oh man, this is guaranteed, it's gonna work. No, go back to the basics. Understand what you're doing. 
And when I went back and just kept it simple, I mean, cash secured puts and, and selling covered calls, that's a, that's about the simplest type of options trading you can do or buying a put and call. But those are very effective. And if you learn a way, a method that's good for you, that works for you, that's like, hey, you know what? I actually I actually like this. I, I, I like lowering my cost basis on shares that I want to own anyway. That's awesome. Because when you do that, then that's a strategy that works for you, that you're comfortable with, that you fully understand, then you run with it and you perfect it over time. So after my uh, debacle with the uh, Broken Butterfly Russell 2000 uh, <laughs> Broken Butterfly spreads I was doing, which honestly, I didn't understand. Why? What are these? Ah, I don't know. I guess it goes into profit when it goes like this. It looks good to me. Um, yeah, learned a lot from that mistake. And uh, so now I've, I've gotten to the point now where um, I'm, I'm much more calculated and it brings up a really important point. Um, many people just try to put their all their eggs in one basket, either whether that's one particular type of strategy or one particular stock or anything like that. You can't do that. Diversification doesn't mean just just different stock positions. Diversification could mean uh, methods of your trading and things like that. And so that's why even for, for me as my whole portfolio, I've got some long-term stuff that's just uh, you know stocks I own that letting it grow over time. I've got this particular strategy that I do. Again, from my trading standpoint, like I said, I trade this way 75% of my trading portfolio and 25% I do it. But you can see that my portfolio is not just limited to, hey, I'm only doing this one thing and that's it. And even outside of that, I've got other investments like uh, like the real estate investments. Uh, I've got some ownership in, in some businesses in uh, Nashville. So it's you you have to just kind of look at uh, look at anything you do in life, and you know nothing is guaranteed. And you have to always be ready for the things that are not going to work in your favor, and know how to mitigate that risk. And that's why I feel really comfortable with this particular strategy that I'm doing overall with my account, but also just making sure that I'm using several different types of strategies at any given time in any given market to make sure that my success rate, again, consistency over profits for me, because if my win rate's high, I know the profits are coming. So that's what I'm focused on. Love it. Well, folks, there you go. That is an in-depth interview with another real life tree out in the world. Mike, you are a great guy, man. Dude, great family. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure to be, be with you last week. And uh, we have a few more days, which is good. Yeah. So, so people out here yeah. have a great time. We're educating each other on yeah. a lot of different things. We're having, having mind shares and yes. just, just learning great things. And yeah. I, have, I do have to say one thing. Um, <laughs> I've tried to explain options and stocks to my wife for <laughs> well over a year now. Yeah. Goes right over her head. He spent one day, one day, one hour going over some things. The way he teaches, you're incredible the way you teach because my wife is like, wow, I'm really interested in this now. He did a great <laughs> job and really showing this to you. I'm like, I've been talking to you this for years, but apparently... I'm just not doing it well. You do a great job and I love, love what you're doing on the educational standpoint. Like I said, from the get go, the fact that you're, you're focused on the educational piece just changes lives forever because uh, you know you teach a man to fish, you've, you've fed him forever. And I'm so, so big on the educational piece too. And um, I, I really appreciate that about you and, and definitely see eye to eye with you on that one. My pleasure, dude. It's uh, I look forward to our friendship and to many, many years together trading and having a good time and enriching lives. So thanks for being on the show. And everyone out there watching, thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for watching the Real Life Trading channel. And thank you for helping us with our mission, which is to enrich lives. I'll see you guys all later. You rock. Bye.